This is a Peugeot 208, the rather stylish little super mini that also offers great value for money. But beware, if you are planning on buying one, there's some pretty serious problems you need to be aware of before you hand over that cash. So let's get into it, let's go. So first up is a rather terrifying problem actually, wherein these cars can suffer brake failure. Now Peugeot did issue a recall on this, but it didn't always fix the issue. Let me try and explain what the problem is. The recall, first of all, pertained to air being in the braking system. And whilst that could cause problems, it's usually not the issue that afflicts this model in particular. So there's an anti-roll bar on the front that's secured by bushes. When those bushes wear out, that anti-roll bar can touch against the caliper at the rear. Now what that's gonna do is compress the piston inside the caliper, and what that means for you is your brake pedal is gonna go to the floor and you're gonna have no brakes. You see, what a lot of manufacturers will do is they'll fit stops to prevent things like this from happening. But on these, there's just nothing to stop it from happening. So if those bushes wear out, you're at risk of it occurring. So I really think Peugeot maybe needs to look at doing a secondary recall to rectify this and stop it from happening once and for all. When it comes to the engines, there was a whole host of them available. Thankfully, there's no real horror stories to fill you in on here. The only thing I'd mention is when it comes to this one liter unit, make sure it's suitable for your needs. If you're doing a lot of town driving, then certainly it could be good, very economical. However, out on the motorways, faster roads, you might find it lacking a little in power, but test drive it and see if it's for you. Now the only recall to make you aware of under here for now was a fuel leak. Now what this referred to was the fuel rail not having been torqued down correctly. So there's not actually bad parts in there, it's more of an assembly issue and Peugeot should put that right for you. Now on the car you're looking at, you're going to smell it right away if it is leaking fuel. So that's one to keep in mind. Now as we finish up our checks under the bonnet here, oh fuck, let me do that again because that looks really bad. As we finish our checks under the bonnet here and get it closed over or the hood depending on where you're watching this from, make sure it latches down correctly. Again, another recall where it didn't latch correctly, it was a bit insecure and it could end up coming up onto the windscreen. Now on that note as well, the windscreen wipers were made from a really hard rubber compound from the factory. They've probably been changed out by this point and it's not really a massive issue, just more of an annoyance, wherein they would skip and sort of jump across the screen in colder climates like we have here in the UK. Swapping them out for some Bosch items will sort it out. So let's get onto these issues at the rear of the car. But before we do, a favor to ask from you guys. We're waging war against those dodgy sellers that try and cover up faults with cars that you're buying. If you want to support us in this, hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, and add a comment below. Anyway, let's get onto these issues. First up, if the car you're looking at has got a spoiler fitted, then give it a good tug. Make sure it's not going anywhere. Those are on with just adhesive, and when that dries out, the spoilers are known to come away. Again, Peugeot should put that right for you. Next up, when we open the boot, or trunk, depending on where you're watching from, make sure that these struts are able to hold it up. There's a problem with these, and again, it's a recall that the boot can close without any warning, so be aware of that one. Finally, what we'll find is that the washer for the rear window here can leak, and when it does, it goes into the boot floor. So make sure it's not damp in there, and if it is, ensure that you save a bit of money in the negotiations for your trouble. So hopping into this interior still feels really fresh. You can see why people choose these cars over the competition. That was a bit hard. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I could not mention that. Hopping into the interior, you can see why people choose to buy these over the competition. They still feel really... <laughs> What's going on? This is fixed, you can still see why people buy them over the competition. Still feels really fresh, really nice, funky interior. In terms of problems to look for, well, before we go on that test drive, get the ignition on and have a look at this multimedia screen. Make sure it's all working okay and keep it on for the duration of your test drive. If at any point it becomes unresponsive or turns off altogether, then there's a problem there. And again, make sure you bring that into the bargain, save yourself a good chunk of cash, or unfortunately, just walk away from that car and find one that doesn't have a failing screen.
Now before we get out on that test drive, start the car up and listen carefully. What's that starter sound like? Is it okay? Does the car hesitate to start? Again, this was yet another recall which referred to the starter motor being a bit underpowered and overheating. So be aware of that one. Anyway, let's talk about the rest of the faults from the road. That's all she's got to give. <laughs> Foot in the floor. Girl, that's because you're not red line in it. <laughs> Why do you hold on to We're it? We're like doing I'm trying to spur it on. <laughs> We're doing 37. So this is Kirsty kind enough to let us borrow and be slightly detrimental <laughs> about our car. <laughs> so Kirsty, do you recommend the car? Should people buy this? Should they look at our cars? What would you say? That won't go into get right, we're good. <laughs> I'd say it's good for a first car. First or car? Or a starter car, but maybe not if you want something fun. And you've had some problems, you had to... Yeah, I had to get a new a new engine, new gearbox, new clutch, new right. CU. So it's fair to say it's not been that reliable, really? No, it's right. not, no. Right, so first check you want to do, get yourself onto a back road like we're on here and make sure it feels all right handling-wise. There's quite a few issues, ranging from loose subframe bolts all the way to alignment not being quite right that can make the handling a bit iffy. So make sure the one that you're driving feels all right. Now, following on from that, pay close attention to the clutch pedal. Make sure the clutch feels all right. It's not necessarily the clutch that wears out, but instead it tends to be the throwout bearing. It's a plastic item and it can melt and kind of bond together so the clutch doesn't fully disengage, which obviously it's gonna wear the clutch out fast, gonna cause all sorts of problems. And it's also gonna drive a bit rubbish as well. Now beyond that, we're running out of time here, so what I'm going to do is add a list of the remaining recalls and problems in the description below. Be sure to check that out, but for now, let's get wrapped up. So how do we finish up then? Well, not great if we're honest. There's a huge amount of recalls on these cars, and judging by the likes of that brake failure, Peugeot aren't done yet adding the recalls and continually fixing these cars. And for that reason, we give it a slightly disappointing 4 out of 10. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and got some value from it, please do give it a like, consider subscribing, and we'll see you when you make your next purchase. Oh, shit. Seatbelt. Seatbelt. <laughs> it won't release. <laughs>